Hey, Richard. What do you think? Hat or no hat? No hat. Hmm. I think I'll give her a hat. In that case, why'd you ask? I wanted a man's opinion. Didn't want to use it, but wanted to get it. Well, if you are going to drag me in here on a Sunday, I am going to listen to my music. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. It's my favorite concerto. Yeah, it relaxes me and allows me to forget that I'm chained to a desk in this sweatshop, Kathy B. Hey, hey, turn that crap off. You need to listen to the radio. Why, is Howard Stern spanking a friend of yours? Come on, Richard. It's Sunday, the Lord's Day. Why don't you go to Mass and drop a candle down your pants? <laughs> That's Seth on keyboards. Thank you for joining us for another live edition of Nothing Trivial. With me, your host, Professor Mark Rodexi. Ah, so, what do you think? Well, I can tell you're white. <laughs> so, Seth's got a steady gig, huh? Yeah. His dad hosts this quiz show on a little public radio station. His mom works there, too. And get this, he wants me to come to the next show and meet them. Wow, that's a big step for you, Annie. I know, that's why I'm nervous. His parents are these big intellectuals and stuff. So will you come with me? Because I don't want to sound like an idiot. I really want his parents to like me. Yeah, but you do. I mean, if you married into that family, your children would actually have a chance of walking upright. <laughs> Okay, folks, we're down to our final question. This one goes to Dr. McMurtry. Before conquering most of Asia, Alexander the Great was the king of which ancient Greek country? I believe it was Mesopotamia. Wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Now, <laughs> Miss Stratton, it's up to you. A correct answer wins you the game. Macedon, Macedon. Macedon. Right you are. You're a winner, Miss Stratton. Congratulations. You just got five in a row. How do you know about Alexander the Great? Well, I know my trivia. Plus, that great Greek restaurant has those placemats. <laughs> Did you know that uh, Sparta was its own city-state? I thought Sparta was a brand of condoms. We'll be back with Miss Stratton's next opponent after this short break. It's Fedaro. Hey, Rodetsky. <laughs> oh, already on a last-name basis. Mom, Dad, hurry up. This is her, Anne. How very illustrious to meet you, Mrs. Rodetsky. Oh, please, it's Naomi or Mom, whichever you prefer. <laughs> so we finally get to meet. I was starting to think that Seth had an imaginary friend. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, this is Caroline Duffy. Hi. Wait a minute. Caroline Duffy, as in Caroline in the city? Yeah, that's me. Uh, uh, 45 seconds, Marv, dear. That is the smartest cartoon in America. Caroline, is there any chance you would ever consent to do our show? She'd be egregious. <laughs> well, um, you know, actually, um, I'm very flattered, but uh, I don't think I'm contestant material. Of course you are, and we have some wonderful prizes. Oh. Thanks for the Triscuits. <laughs> How was your date with Seth last night? Great. He took me to this smoky little blues club. He even sat in with the band and played a few tunes. Oh, it was, uh, terrific. <laughs> and? And what? I sense a big butt coming. Don't keep her waiting, Annie. Turn around. Well, now that you mention it, you know that smoky little blues club? Mm -hmm. We went there with his parents. They do everything together. They're unbelievably close. Oh, I, I think that's kind of sweet. Really? You don't think that's just a wee bit creepy? <laughs> Wait a minute. How long have you been seeing Seth? About six weeks. Why? Oh, yeah! I almost totally forgot about the traditional six-week freakout. <laughs> I guess I'm just not used to a family that cares about each other. I could get kidnapped and my father would fall asleep reading the ransom note. Oh, 
Seth's parents are so excited you're doing their show on Sunday. Wait a minute, you're going to be a contestant on Nothing Trivial? Yeah. Huh? What? Well, you know, you don't exactly do your best in uh, high-pressure situations. That is so not true. I have deadlines every week, and I manage to make them, even if it means you have to work on Sundays. Uh, uh, remember the time there was a long line behind you at the ATM, and you made a $4 million deposit? That was a very difficult situation. Those were nice people, and they were in a hurry. Yeah, but this is just hanging out, answering trivia questions on some rinky-dink college station. Oh, yeah. Did you know that that rinky-dink college station is broadcast live to all 50 states? It is? Oh, my God. I, I just freeze up in front of a lot of people. Oh, this is going to be the Wisconsin State Spelling Bee all over again. Why? Right, what happened? He asked as his nervous system involuntarily shut down. <laughs> It was the third grade, and I... Caroline Duffy, your word is negotiate. <laughs> Please spell negotiate. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Duffy, your time is up. Please sit down. Jonathan, the word is negotiate. Negotiate. N-E-G-O-T-I-A-T-E. -E. Negotiate. Correct. Congratulations. <laughs> For the rest of the year, all the kids called me Caroline Doofy. Oh, honey, all you had was a little stage fright. You know, actors have to deal with that all the time. You just relax, you block out everything around you, and focus on what you need to do. Does that really work? Or you picture the audience naked, which never really worked for me. That's because you've seen them all that way anyway. Once burned, twice shy. Oh, Seth, your parents are great. They're sweet, and they are so, so smart. Oh, they're brilliant, because they think you're the girl for me. You, mister, are getting a kiss. Oh, it's wonderful to see people in love. <laughs> but not when they're tying up to bar stools. Come on. <laughs> uh, actually, I want to order a good bottle of red wine. Annie, you pick. Okay. Well, Annie, this set's a pretty good guy. I like him. He's pretty great, huh? Terrific. He didn't set a price limit. <laughs> Just bring us anything you haven't tasted and stuck the cork back into. Johnny, I need you to run to the liquor store. <laughs> you know, we were just saying this reminds us of a place we ate at in France. Oh, so you all vacation together? Every year. It's our one time to catch up as a family. I mean, you know, if Seth is busy, sometimes we go two, three days without having a meal together. Boy, you guys are a close family. I didn't even know I had a brother until I was 12. <laughs> and here you are, a steak for you. Ooh, and the raviolis for you. And for you. And for you, Annie. The fish special. I thought this was a special yesterday. Apparently not special enough. There's plenty left over, okay? <laughs> Enjoy. Mine smells delicious. Mm. Uh, Seth. Ma, you're going to embarrass me in front of Annie. Smaller bites. And the stock market is way up today as corporate America continues to grow fat on the bones of its exploited workers. <laughs> Dad, I still want the run check. <laughs> That's it for the news. Now let's get back to Mellow Moods with Kristen Burke. What's up? Um, I'm 
I'm looking for Professor Radetsky from Nothing Trivial. Oh, he'll be by later. Would you just tell him that Caroline Duffy was... Whoa! Back up! <laughs> Caroline Duffy the cartoonist? Dude, I am such a big fan of yours. All my friends read your strip. <laughs> You read my strip? Yeah. You are so retro. It's like, hello, 1987. Uh, look, um, could you do me a favor and tell the professor that uh, something came up and I can't do his show on Sunday night? Oh, that is such a drag. You know, the station was going to dump the show till they heard you were coming on. You fully pulled it out of the toilet. Really? Yeah, it's like, yo, toilet, give that back. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, the professor's gonna be so bummed. That show was like his whole life. Old people crying is such a buzz chafer. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I don't want to chafe anybody's buzz. <laughs> Especially if that's a bad thing. <laughs> Just forget what I said and tell the professor hi and I'll see him on Sunday, okay? Really? Yeah. Oh, this is so cool! Oh my God! Wait till everybody hears I met the Caroline in the City chick! Dude! I just gotta have an autograph. Uh, uh, okay, do you have something for me to sign? Yeah, sure. Right here. Right next to Mick Jagger. I'm focused. Ask me another question. Okay. In the Old West, a lamp made out of tin cans and bacon grease was called a what? Aren't you going to do anything to distract me? Five, four, three, two, one! Okay, I give up. What's the answer? Bitch! Hey, I answered ten in a row. What more did you want? Oh, no, no, no. See, that's the answer. They called it a, a bitch lamp. Huh. Not a lot of women in the Old West. <laughs> well, the important thing is I am not freezing under pressure. Okay, hit me again. Ask me another question. <sighs> okay, okay, good. Uh, name the painter who coined the expression 15 minutes of fame. Tick, tock, tick, uh... tock. Andy Warhol, Andy oh. Warhol. Okay, now let's try oxygen deprivation. Caroline Duffy. <laughs> Name the largest freshwater lake in North America. I'm sorry, Miss Duffy, your time is up. <laughs> Somebody better be dead. Richard, it's me, Caroline. I'm sorry. I I'm just really desperate. I'm, re I'm really freaked out about the show tomorrow, and I'm, I'm just so embarrassed that, that I'm going to make a fool of myself in front of all those people, you know, and, 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 and I might just freeze up, and, and I, I just don't know what to do. And you said that, you know, you, you had that music that made you feel calm, and, and did you take it home with you? Yeah, but I, I, I made you a copy a long time ago. Oh. Um, but you don't happen to know where I might have put it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, to the left of the stereo, under the broken camera, mm -hmm. right next to the... Uh, that Helen Reddy CD I used to prop the window open. Hey. You all right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm great. I, I just need to start breathing again. <laughs> Richard, I'm sorry. Thanks again. Good night. Hello, Madonna. What does she want now? Oh, she's just uh, trying to find a tape of some music I made for her to calm her down. She's going to do that quiz show tomorrow. All she needs is a good night's sleep, and so do we. You found me right? Okay. Good night. We will all sleep a lot better once Caroline learns to get along without you so much. When or not it is off. Sunny door. Mm -hmm. Caroline? Oh. oh. Uh, 
sorry, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I didn't see anything. Just some leg. Actually, lots of leg. Not, not, not that I was looking at the. Uh, what are you doing here so late? Well, I mean, after you woke me up, I couldn't go back to sleep. I was just sort of uh, lying there. Oh, were you worried about me? No, no. It's a, it's a terrible mattress. I mean, uh, part of it's good, but. Uh, that's Julia's side now. Anyway, how's the preparation going? Well, you know what? Your music really helps. Thank you. I really like it. As much as Helen Rennie? One day you'll wake up to the genius that is Helen Rennie. <laughs> some tea? Thank you. You know what? I think you are going to do just great tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you. Oh. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Here, here. Get it. Get it. Julia. Oh, well, how are you two? Julia, what are you doing here? Well, when you told me how nervous Caroline was about her show, I couldn't sleep. Come on, we should go home. Oh, no, 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 wait. I brought something for Caroline. You told me she needed to relax. Caroline, tomorrow you take this with you, put the earphone in, and when you hear the music, bye-bye stage fright. It's actually not such a bad idea. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a quiz show. I mean, I mean, if I had an earphone, they'd think someone was feeding me the answers. Oh no 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 no! You just run the wire under your blouse and brush your hair over your ear. No one will ever know. Could work. Oh okay. Well, thanks. I'll give it a try. Yeah. What are friends for? <laughs> Come on, Richard. I'm sure Caroline is getting chilly under that little towel. Um, listen, Julia. Thanks for being such a good sport. I know how bad this looks. Oh, Caroline, please, don't apologize. Every woman looks terrible without makeup. <laughs> so, you were alive when Elton John was straight. What was that like? Uh, scary. I need to talk to you. Oh, could you excuse me for a minute? Sure. Isn't she cool? It's like talking to a time machine. <laughs> so, what happened? Did you break up with Seth? I tried, but before I could get to the whole weird relationship with his parents thing, he invited me to Vermont for the weekend. <laughs> Skiing, fireplace, jacuzzi, the works. We're back on track. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, you look mighty relaxed. Oh, yeah, um, Richard gave me this music, and Julia told me to put this earphone in, and it's really working. That's great. Speaking of which, where is Gomez and Morticia? Oh. <laughs> He'll be here. Okay, if I can get everybody to take a seat. Will the contestants please come on the stage and take your places? Our show is about to begin. Good luck. Psst, I heard the good news. We're all going to have such a good time in Vermont. <laughs> okay, folks, it's time to start playing Nothing Trivial. With a linoleum installer from Queens, who's also the president of the Tri-State Fencer Chapter, Mr. Alvin Krupp. And our very special guest, the creator of the award-winning comic strip, Caroline in the City, Caroline Duffy. Zoranya, yeah! <laughs> would you get us some seats? I'll be right there. And our first question tonight goes to you, Caroline, for 50 points. Well, I'm sorry, before we start our game, let's pause. Ten seconds for station identification. Caroline, there's a woman in the audience who says you're wearing an earpiece. Well, yeah. My God, Caroline, you're competing for Triscuits. <laughs> now, Caroline, for 50 points, it's always been a dog-eat-dog -dog world, especially in the Old West, where a lamp made of tin cans and bacon grease was called... A what? Caroline, five seconds and the question goes to Mr. Krupp. Bitch! <laughs> that is correct! Annie, 
Jenny, I heard about you and Seth going your separate ways. I hope it didn't have anything to do with us. Oh, no. Sometimes things just don't work out. You, you guys are great. Oh, I'm so glad you feel that way. Because Marv and I want you to know that just because he broke up with you doesn't mean that we have to break up with you. <laughs> so we're going to see you tomorrow night in Cats. And then we're going to talk about it afterwards at dinner. Okay, sweetheart? Look at the fat on that meat. It's schmutz. You don't need this here. Let me cut the fat away, darling. Do you want a little piece? Come on, open up. Open up.